the referees. A good crowd here at Nationwide Arena, and we're underway for a spot in the Sweet 16. And these are too good to hold. You, you saw what Marquette tries to do. He took it from Hogarth right away. Stevie Mitchell, the oh, best yeah. defender. And he finishes at the other end. Michigan State doesn't normally turn it over, and this Marquette team, they steal it nine times a game for 16 turnovers. Michigan State has to be solid with the ball. A.J. Hogar, only six turnovers in his last four games. He's been doing a lot of that, the dish to Marty Sissoko. Yeah, Sissoko with the screen and the quick dive. And one thing about Hogarth, he's a better, he has a better assist to turnover ratio in the half court than he does in transition. Solid half court point guard. Here's Cam Jones, who had 18 in the second half in the win over Vermont on Friday. Now Mitchell with the shot clock at five on the attack, and his shot won't go. Joey Hauser clears it off the boards. And Michigan State will always, as Tom Mizzo does, try to push the ball up the floor. Michigan State beat USC by 10 on Friday. Only made five threes in that game. It was the first time they made five or fewer threes in a game and won this season. Here's Hogarth. And he lays it in. Good patient offense. One thing about Marquette, not great at defending the rim. Don't really have a great shot blocker. Olivier Maxence Prosper misfires on the three. Marquette made 10 threes against the Catamounts on Friday. And we have a whistle as Hauser hit the deck. Hogard active early, Lab. Yeah, no doubt about it, but where's the help on the weak side? Stevie Mitchell didn't want to leave and give the help in the corner. Somebody's got to come from the other side. Kolick commits the foul. He was in foul trouble against Vermont in the first round as well. Tyson Walker, tough shot is good. One thing about Michigan State, they are a veteran team, and this Marquette team is still relatively young. Here's Kolick for three. Kolick injured his right thumb in the first game on Friday against Vermont, but said he is fine. Got it caught in a jersey, but he's not too worried about it as he gets set to play in this game today. Two and a half minutes in. Aikens in the corner for three, and he doesn't get the bounce. It's tipped around to Jones. Oso Iguodaro. Aikens got a hand on it. And then Iguodaro turns it over. Good defense by Michigan State. Watch live men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with NCAA March Madness Live. Scan the QR code now to download. One of the things that Iguodaro likes to do a lot is what he just tried to do, which is back his man down into the post because they don't really have anybody in there. They got a lot of spacing. But this Michigan State team is very physical. They're not going to let him get the spots that he got to the other day with Vermont. Yeah, Tom Izzo wasn't happy with his team's defense the last couple of weeks, but he said after the win over USC, we got our mojo back on the defensive end. Jackson Kohler has checked in for Coach Izzo. Here's Hogard for three. How about it? You know, they're a great three-point shooting team, but he's not one of them. Just 31% from deep, but his three forces Shaka Smart into a timeout. It's a 9-0 run for Michigan State. 9-2 our score as we say hello to the third member of our team, Jamie Erdahl. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Coach. Tom Izzo has another line to add to his resume. Well, at least according to Shaka Smart, he's America's coaching mentor. Back in 2000, Tom Izzo was leading Michigan State to a national championship run, and Shaka Smart was watching him as a D2 graduate assistant coach. He said, that solidified my path as a coach. I wanted to be like Tom Izzo. 2011, VCU was making their Cinderella one. Shaka reached out to Izzo. They have had a friendship ever since. Izzo won't let the friendship be one-sided, though. He praises Shaka for his coaching style. They are good friends now, but now they got to do it 20 feet apart tonight. 
For a spot in the Sweet 16, thank you very much, Jamie, as David Joplin is checked in for Shaka Smart and the Golden Eagles. Joplin will take the three here, way short. And he was terrific off the bench the other day at 12 points. I'll tell you what, this Michigan State defense right now, they're guarding a great half-court offensive team. As we said, top 10 in the nation. And right now, they can't get anything going in the half-court. Hogard to Walker in the corner for three. <laughs> And the rebound to Malik Hall. His putback is there. You know, the only stat that Marquette is really not good in is rebounding. They're minus four a game on the glass. Michigan State plus three. They've got to do the job on the glass. It is one of their weaknesses. Five straight empty trips for Marquette. And Kolick is fouled on the shot. Takes us to a timeout. Marquette only trailed for 13 seconds of their game against Vermont. They're down 11-2 early. Golden Eagles, how about the Big East? Off to a 5-1 start, and Marquette trying to keep that going with UConn and Creighton set to play later tonight. And that is making the commissioner of the Big East, Val Ackerman, very happy. She's in the house here in Columbus. We chatted with her pregame, and... Hoping her conference keeps it rolling here. Yeah, she's done a great job with this new formulated Big East, no doubt about it. Kolick ends a three minute and 55 second scoreless drought for Marquette. Well, you think of it, Stevie Mitchell stole the ball in the first possession of the game, and that was the only thing they've done since. One out of five from the floor. A little bit of pressure here from the Golden Eagles. They yeah. won 29 games this year. That is a new school record. Yeah, they like to get after you. They, they steal it nine times. They force 16 turnovers. But this is not an easy team to turn over, Michigan State. Trey Holloman back to Walker. Fakes the three. And we'll pull it out with eight on the shot clock. Malik Hall with four to shoot. Holloman's got to put one up. He does. And that's a shot clock violation. Holloman coming up way short. Well, you can watch CBS Sports HQ for free 24-7 coverage of the big dance and all the biggest moments in sports. Catch tournament highlights, picks, previews, recaps, and much more. Download the CBS Sports app to watch today. Prosper thought about a three. Marquette, one of the better three-point shooting teams as Prosper misfires, but I, on the season, Marquette 35% from deep. And they make nine a game. Michigan State only makes seven and a half. But what Michigan State is doing right now is they're not allowing dribble penetration. So they can't get those dribble kick where you draw help and make a three-point shot. Hasn't done that yet. Hauser and a foul is oh. called. And that's going to be number two on Tyler Kolick. Yeah, I mean, he was in foul trouble the other day. He only played 25 minutes, which for him is not a lot. He normally plays 33. Hard to tell from there. A frustrating opener for Kolick because of the foul trouble, and he was held to eight points. We asked Shaka Smart how he thought Kolick would bounce back in this one, and he said he didn't have any worries about him. He is a gamer, he's a winner, and now he's going to go to the bench with two fouls. Yeah, and he's going to go to the bench for a while. There's no doubt about it. Because you can't have that kid pick up his third. Now, he may come back for a couple of minutes with seven to go, eight to go, and play three or four minutes if Shaka Smart trusts him. But that's a tough decision with a guy who's so important to that team. And a lane violation called against Michigan State. Don't see too many of those. Tom Izzo setting an NCAA tournament record for most consecutive tournament appearances by a head coach. This is his 25th in a row. And now you're going to see Cam Jones handling the point, which is fine. He can do it, but it hurts his scoring, I believe, when he's not able to just concentrate on scoring. And he's a tremendous scorer. Marquette still only with one field goal in the first half, and they turn it over here. Chase Ross coughs it up. Malik Hall going to the deck, lost and the shoe. he lost his shoe. Well, he's had foot problems all year, missed 11 games, but it was the left foot that's bothered him. Here, the, the right foot is an issue. 
And you can see he collided with Holloman, got tripped up, his own teammate. Wow. He slipped pretty good there. Tom Izzo telling us he was pleased with the way Hall moved in the opener against USC. That foot has lingered throughout the year. Didn't think his lateral quickness was that good the last couple of weeks of the regular season, but liked what he saw from Hall with six points and four rebounds on Friday. Yeah, he definitely looked bet was moving better in the game on Friday. Moving better now with both sneakers on as well. That helps. Good move. Great cross. And he finishes. I mean, that's a six-eight guy crossing over like that. Right now, Michigan State very comfortable in the half court, and Marquette not comfortable. Look at the help defense, though. Somebody's trying. They can't drive it right now. And the Michigan State fans making some noise here in Columbus. About a four-hour drive away, and they have made the trip in mass. Prosper. Nice fake. And he knocks it down. Second field goal today for Marquette. I mean, that was a great move, no doubt about it. But that was also really good Michigan State defense again. Hauser for two. Pretty. You know, that's what you have to do with Hauser, though. you got to make him put it on the ground. The other day, he made four threes. They were just all catch-and-shoot threes. That time, that was pretty good defense. Make him put it on the ground. He was able to make him pay them. Joplin from the outside. And Sissoko had it, lost it, right to his teammate Aikens. Hauser was 0 for 3 inside the arc on Friday against USC. And Marquette likes to bring that double team when you take the ball to the baseline. Using up the shot clock, it's down to 4. Oh, he's gonna have to throw one up. He does. Hauser's right there for the offensive board, and a oh. foul is called. Wow. How did Hauser sneak underneath that Marquette defense? I don't know. It didn't look like a foul from here, but we have to see it again. Good offensive rebound. Oh, yeah, he got fouled. Nobody for Marquette went for the ball, and now Hauser goes to the free throw line. He spent one year at Marquette in his freshman season, and then transferred to Michigan State. He was there with his brother, Sam, who's now a member of the Celtics. He eventually transferred to Virginia, and Hauser knew the questions were coming yesterday about his time at Marquette. He said, look, that was a long time ago. I don't know any of the players or coaches that are still on that team. It's a different head coach, Steve Wojciechowski, no longer there. And there's his parents, Dave and Stephanie, who were in Minnesota on Tuesday to watch Sam play for the Celtics against the T-Wolves, and then they drove overnight 12 hours here to Columbus to get ready for Michigan State. Dedicated parents, the Housers. And a lot to cheer early on on the Michigan State side. They lead by 13. And the freshman Carson Cooper's in who played great the other day. Six points, four rebounds off the bench. Jackson Kohler and Carson Cooper gave Tom Mizzou a tremendous lift. These two big freshmen off the bench. Now let's see what they do with that back end. Sean Jones, local product from just outside Columbus in Gehenna. Now Cam Jones for three. Oh, it's wow. good. Well, he was the difference in the second half on Sun on Friday against Vermont with 18 after halftime. Well, what did I ask Shaka yesterday, Andrew? I said, Coach, do you think he makes tough shots? He goes, oh, there's no doubt about it. That was a tough three. And much needed for Marquette. A team that's won 10 consecutive games for the first time in 11 years. Aggressive hedge by Igadoro there. Walker to the corner, Hall for three. And Cam Jones is there for the rebound. Jones capable of heating up in a hurry. Iguodaro turns it over, threw it right to Hall. I gotta tell you, Andrew, that was great defense by Carson Cooper. He cut Iguodaro off on that baseline. Aikens transition three, halfway down and out. And I think Marquette, they got to push the tempo. Even though they're a good half-court team, right now they're not getting much in the half-court. They got to try and push it a little bit more. 
Mitchell finds Jones. Hogard with the rebound, and he's looking to push. Cooper, and now Hall again in the corner. And a long rebound to Mitchell. And that was pretty good scouting by Shaka Smart. We saw Tyson Walker splitting double teams the other day on pick and rolls a lot. And a foul is called. That's going to go on Tyson Walker and takes us to a timeout. Michigan State playing for a spot in this Sweet 16 against Shaka Smart and Marquette. We are back with our game summary, and so far, Michigan State getting it done on the glass and in the paint. And a moment ago, Jamie Erdahl with Shaka Smart. All right, Coach, where can more scoring be found on offense? Well, we got to get more aggressive. We're, we're tentative. They're taking us out of a lot of our cuts. Uh, obviously, with two fouls on Tyler, we got some lineups out there that don't play a lot, but you got to win anyway. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, right now, you can see it. No, they usually score for almost 40 points in the paint. That's top 10 in the nation. They have two points in the paint right now because the dual penetration has not been there. Give Michigan State, though, all the credit in the world for the half-court defense. Here's Jones, defended by Hogarth. Jones gets to the 10, but could not finish, and Sissoko clears. And also, with Shaka said 100% true, Tyler Kolick out. Now, you got to wonder, is Shaka going to think about bringing him back in if this starts to get away a little bit more with those two fouls? He's the, he is the most indispensable guy on the team, and Igadora would be second. Walker, no. Aikens on the glass, and he's fouled. Michigan State has now missed five consecutive shots, but a good offensive rebound by the sophomore Aikens. Aikens from Farmington, Michigan, really turning it on down the stretch of the season. Over the last five games, he's averaged 14 points per game. Well, don't miss original series, Tulsa King, the game, Star Trek Picard, and a mountain of entertainment on Paramount+. Plus. What are you thinking about Kolek? I think I would put him back in with probably eight minutes to go and try and get three or four minutes out of him, but obviously he's got to be really careful. I really think that... That foul, he had two fouls on Joey Hauser, both of his committed fouls. He's got to be careful, obviously. Oh, that was a try. Iguodaro able to lay it in. That was their first easy basket in the paint. Hauser is fouled by Cam Jones. Iguodaro, member of the All Big East second team. Yeah, I mean, he's one of the best ball handling centers in the country. And the other thing about him is he's got a two-to-one assist to turnover ratio. He's their second best passer after Tyler Kolick. Tom Izzo told us yesterday that Iguodaro has feet like a guard, and he passes like a guard. That's something he worked on very hard in the offseason. And now a nice move by Shaka Smart going a little zone to man-to-man. -to -man. On that first pass, they switch to man-to-man, -to -man, and it gets Michigan State, as you can see, standing around a little bit. Aikens. Oh, it goes! And the foul! What a quick step past Oso and a chance at three. You know, you got to give Aikens a lot of credit because Michigan State was standing around for a lot of this possession, but they switched. They switched one through five, and Higadoro ends up with a tough matchup with Aikens, and he just goes on him. And that is the second foul on Higadoro. Well, now Shaka Smart is keeping him out there. And that's why he's trying. He may have to go regular zone, not zone to man to man. He may have to go some regular zone. Jones for three. There it is for Cam Jones. You cannot sleep on him for a quarter of a second. Like, Walker was pretty close. But with him, you got to get closer. His 98th three-pointer of the year. That leads this Marquette team. 8.45 to go in the first. Joplin really harassing Hauser. 
Sissoko way out high to set the screen for Hogard with the shot clock down to four. Hogard long two. An air ball, and it goes up from underneath the basket. It's Marquette ball. Can't go through that way. That doesn't count. Jones two for two from the outside, trying to make it three for three, but that one won't go down. And Hauser the rebound. I like Shaka Smart getting Cam Jones off the ball. I think that definitely helps the offense they need. Aikens, no, Sissoko, yes. You take a look at that. One green shirt and four white shirts under the basket, and Sissoko tips it in. Mitchell slipped to the ground. That's a travel. And a timeout on the floor. A lot of defense going on right now for the Spartans. Marquette trying to hang in there. 23-13. Welcome back to Columbus. I'm with Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo. Coach, your offense is scoring at an incredible clip right now. What has them playing so comfortably? Well, we have been running pretty good. Now, they're getting into us a little more now. We've missed some open shots in the lane, but I'm still a little concerned about our ball movement. You know, it seems like we're just dribbling the ball to death. Part of it might be their pressure. If we could move it a little bit, then attack, I think we'd be better. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. And to his point, three assists on nine made field goals. Yeah, no doubt about it. He wants to see this offense. They got a little stagnant lately. All right, you see Kolick is back out there with 7.46 to go, playing with two fouls. Five offensive rebounds for Michigan State. They already have seven second chance points today. They had six the entire game against USC on Friday. And here's Marquette showing that zone again. Let's see if it stays zone or if they change the man to man out of it. Right now it looks like they're staying zone. Shot clock at four. Hauser throws one up. And the rebound to Cam Jones. Michigan State plus seven on the glass in the early going here. Kolick back in. Prosper, and he's fouled. That's going to go on Sissoko. You can get complete coverage of the NCAA Division I Women's Tournament on NCAA.com. And there is Olivier Maxens Prosper. His sister, Cassandre, plays at Notre Dame. And their game just finished. They beat Mississippi State. And his sister had seven points in the win. So a busy weekend for the Prosper family. He's got the ball here, down by 10. Kolick had it poked away in a turnover. And, and really, you think about this team, Michigan State, really, they know exactly what they want to do when the, Michigan, when the Marquette kids try to get into the lane, doubling hard. Hauser, tough shot for two. Now that's two shots that Hauser has made off the dribble. He has seven points in the first half. Prosper in the paint, and he's fouled. Joey Hauser's been known for his outside shooting, but he's been going inside the arc today. Well, you see how Stevie Mitchell closed on him. He said he didn't want to let him. Shaka has told his guys, you can't let this kid get an open three. Stevie Mitchell closes out a little too hard, and Hauser goes by him. Prosper, the junior from Montreal. When he was on the court on Friday against Vermont, Marquette was plus 24. CBS Tonight catch two new exciting episodes of The Equalizer and East New York with Queen Latifah, Amanda Warren, Jimmy Smits, and Richard Kind. It all starts tonight at 8, 7 Central after 60 minutes on CBS. All right, a short stint out there for Kolick. He's already back on the bench. And you started to talk about Prosper's... Uh, Plus minus, he's plus 379 for the season when he's in the game, and minus 42 when he's not in the game on the season. Amazing. 
Here's Hall, two on one, the lineup. Oh, yeah! Carson Cooper! <laughs> Textbook press break, by the way. Michigan State up a dozen. Jones can't answer, and a whistle inside. And that's going to go. That's going to go on Michigan State. That is classic. And this is 3 on 2. Get the ball to Tyson Walker, a guard in the middle of the floor. He leads the break, and they finish with that dunk. That is textbook press break. That was on Joey Hauser. That's his first. Cooper, as Steve mentioned, tied career highs on Friday with points. Six of them and rebounds four. Yeah, those two kids are really getting better. Mitchell on the attack with the left hand, no. Mitchell gets it back and he's fouled. He's their hustle guy, he's their glue guy. And Stevie Mitchell's made some plays here for Marquette in the first half when they have desperately needed them. Yeah, he's got to finish that first one. It was a good drive, the help didn't come, somebody finally got to the rim, wasn't able to finish it, but got fouled. Mitchell, the sophomore from Reading, Pennsylvania, and a 4.0 student at Marquette. I got to tell you, Andrew, for the last month, there's been very few times that Marquette hasn't been on their game. Yeah, they're a team that's played from ahead a lot. Now, they weren't ahead on March 9th against St. John's. They were down by 14 in that game, but they came back to win. They're going to be on the comeback trail again today, down by 10 with five and a half to go in the first. Hogard, and a foul is called, and that's going to go against Michigan State, a charge on Hogard. Yeah, but Stevie Mitchell is their best defender. He does a great job there of just beating Hogard to the spot. Establishing legal position, and Hogard put him on the floor. So Hogard goes out with two fouls, and Kolick back on the floor with two fouls. Iguodaro continues to sit for Marquette with two. Here's Ben Gold. Oh, nice. Oh, and the for the finish, and the foul! And that's riled up the Marquette fans here in Columbus. Well, give Ben Gold a lot of credit here. He gives the little fake, then he drives, and then the help comes Hauser. Nobody's back there to help that, to help the helper, and he's able to finish Prosper. Really good job by Ben Gold, the freshman. Ben Gold, a really impressive story. He's from New Zealand, and he attended the NBA Global Academy in Australia. He's the Academy's first New Zealand native to go Division I in his freshman season for Shaka Smart as Prosper misses the free throw. Foul trouble adding up here in the first half with five minutes to go. Oh, he's, that's, that's ten. That is. And a turnover by the Spartans. See, Tyson Walker is yelling at... I was trying to see he was Carson Cooper to come and meet the ball. And he just took off. And right away, Shaka putting Tyler Kolick back in the, back in the game. So he's going offense, defense yep. with Kolick. Any chance he can to get him in on the offensive end, he's doing it. Jones with the left hand. Oh, yes. 6 0 run for Marquette. All of a sudden, starting to get into the paint area a little bit easier. And then Marquette and their fans making some noise. They've cut the deficit down to six. Walker, high off the glass and it goes. Oh, Cam Jones is hurt. Oh no, Cam Jones behind the play, down on both knees. Jones is up and hobbling over to the Marquette bench.
Take another look at what happened to Jones. Middle of your screen. Right there. A bad step. Didn't look like any contact. No. no. Jones is getting looked at over on the Marquette bench. And they're going to make this the media timeout with 4.20 to go in the first half. Spartans up by eight. CAA tournament news coming up on AT&T at the half. There's Cam Jones still waiting to see if he's going to be able to come back in. At least he will not on this whistle as he goes back to the bench. Team high 19 in the win over Vermont on Friday. Looks like he's going to try to ride the bike and see if he can keep loose. Kolick is out there with two fouls and 4.15 to go. Well, Shock has done a good job of getting him back out there on the offensive end. Prosper can't finish inside. Hauser takes it off the glass. Hogard continues to sit for Michigan State with two fouls. Walker to Aikens in the corner. Hauser thought about a long three, drives in. And now Hall for three. And the rebound to Kola. Well, you know, Ken Palm has a lot of great stats, and one of the great stats he has on Tom Izzo is that he only brings in a guy with two fouls like 3% of the time. So Hogard is not coming back in, I don't think. Does he have a stat on how often Izzo doesn't get along with the referees? That's, no, you don't need a stat there. <laughs> I don't think Tom agreed with that one. Good news for Marquette. Cam Jones at the scorer's table. He is set to check in. Jamie Erdahl has more. Yeah, there was a cheer out of the fan section when Cam Jones went to the scorer's table. He refused treatment, really. I can't quite tell if it was that right ankle or not. He was stretching his groin a lot, too, but he got up on that bike, and he looks like himself as he comes back in this game. I'm told there's no injury history on that right ankle, so it shouldn't be a flare-up of any kind. All right, thank you very much, Jamie. Such an important part of this Marquette team. And Kolick, because it's an offense-defense, back to the bench. This is the freshman Chase Ross at the free throw line. 29-22. And here comes that 1-2-2 two, two, three-quarter court. Got to get somebody in the middle of the floor. They just get it across. Yeah, Shaka this... Smart thought it was a 10-second violation. That rule press has been bothersome, and it's making Michigan State chew up a lot of the shot clock. Walker connects. Six points for Tyson Walker. Terrific pull-up shooter off the dribble. Hauser out on Jones. We've seen his range so far in the first half. Now Gold launches. And the rebound knocked out of bounds. And it's going to stay with Marquette. Another look at that one. Wow. Mm. I think that's Michigan State's. And they're showing it on the big board here in Columbus. And the Michigan State fans agree with you, Steve. Shockingly. <laughs> that's a surprise. It allows Kolick to come back into the game. He's got the ball here. Locates gold, corner three. Hits it. Just his 15-3 of the year. But what a call that turned out to be. Third three of the half for Marquette. With two and a half to go before halftime. Five to shoot. Once again, the shot clock winding down. Walker from the free throw line. Tough shot, no good. Tipped around to Cooper. Now Aikens for three. That one's knocked out, and Cam Jones comes away with it. Marquette does not have numbers more, and Jones will pull it back. Yeah, Aikens, wide open shot. He's a 42% three-point shooter. 
Here's Kolek cutting back to Jones. Jones to the hoop. Acrobatic oh. shot almost. And again, Tom Izzo and the Michigan State fans looking for a call. They don't get it. Hauser draws the double, trying to get away from it. Once again, the shot clock down to three. Hall fakes a three. Now puts up a baseline runner. Air ball. And a shot clock violation. You know, since Hogard's been out, they've really struggled in the half court. He is a terrific half court point guard. And Walker can play the point, but that's not really what he is. He's more of the scoring guard. It's a 10-4 run for Marquette. Trailed by as many as 13 in the first half. Prosper for three. It's good! And the Eagles are soaring in Columbus. Time out, Michigan State. Here in Columbus, but take a look here. Kolick is now starting to get into this area. And once the ball gets into that area, it creates a lot of problems for a defense. Joey Hauser kind of comes halfway to give a little help. Leaves his man open right there on the strong side. They're able to make the three. And I have a feeling Izzo was saying the same exact thing that you just said during that timeout. Maybe not as nicely, though. Well, and the Kolick, the Kolick getting into the lane led to the Ben Gold three-point shot, too. So they just scored six points because Kolick was able to get in the lane, which he was not able to do for much of this half. And you mentioned Michigan State looks a little different without Hogard. Since he went out, they have four points on nine trips. Yeah, he is a terrific. His assist to turnover ratio in the half court is one of the best in the country. Good move there by Aikens to get to the hoop. And they need him to get going because he's a talented kid who's played very well lately. A five-second difference between the game clock and shot clock here in the first half. Hauser to the deck. Prosper to the hoop. And Hauser with the rebound. Shot clock turned off. And Tom Izzo saying, let's hold for one. Oh, yeah, I looked like they were going to shoot that. I know he doesn't want him to shoot it. Walker to Hauser. He's got to put one up in a hurry at the horn. No good. And Michigan State goes into the locker room with a five-point lead. They've led by as many as 13. 33-28 at the half. at and at the half after these messages. Welcome back to Columbus as we take a look at the Marriott Bonvoy first half stats and for Michigan State they shot 65% on their two point attempts but just one of 10 from deep and back courtside with Steve Lapis I'm Andrew Catalan we'll hear from Jamie Erdahl coming up it just feels like Michigan State should be up by more than five Lap. Well, yeah I think they've exerted their will on Marquette I mean they control the pace of the game it isn't fast but the big thing is they have 20, they have 18 points in the paint, Michigan State. Marquette has only eight. Marquette's top 10 in the nation at points in the paint with 40 a game. That's where Michigan State has really gotten them today. Jamie Erdahl had a chance to catch up with both head coaches. Jamie. I did. Tom Izzo was hot when that first half ended about the lack of defensive effort from his guys on the back half of the first 20 minutes of this frame. Expect Michigan State to be shot out of a cannon defensively because he said that is the single problem that they had in the first half. They were handheld defensively. On the flip side, Shaka Smart, he said he's going to keep pressing, not because it's working, but because he feels that gives his team energy and it sparks things offensively well that's definitely what they need to do because their pressure really hurt Michigan State some without a doubt in that first half but let's understand this Tyler Kolick sat for 10 minutes also Igador sat for nine minutes AJ Holgard set Holgard sat for the end of the half that those fouls have had an effect on this game without a doubt for both teams 
Marquette basketball to start the second half. The winner of this game advances to the Sweet 16 against Kansas State. And Prosper sends Marquette off to a good start in the second half. Well, he's been really good. He had nine points in the first half, knocking down threes. He's a stretch four. You got to get out on him. He leads all scorers with 12 points. And a whistle away from the ball and a foul is called on Cam Jones of Marquette. First Marquette foul in the last nine minutes and 36 seconds. K-State winning a thriller earlier on CBS over Kentucky. Here's Hogarth cutting into the paint, looking for Sissoko. And Sissoko able to save it, but only one on the shot clock. Walker has to put one up. He gets it off in time. It's no good. Mitchell the rebound. Marquette with a chance to tie or take the lead. They've had only one lead today. It was 2-0. Now they've got their second lead. Prosper again. The pick and pop by Prosper, and they're not getting to him fast enough at all. And an offensive foul is called on Michigan State. Tom Izzo's furious. You take a look at Prosper here. They come up and try to set a double screen. You're going to see right here. And all he does is flare back out, and they leave him. And Hauser is slow getting back to him, and he's able to knock out the three. And at the other end, it was Hauser who picked up the foul for the Spartans. Kolick on the drive, left hand, no. Iguodaro tips it out to Jones. He launches a three. Iguodaro, another offensive rebound. Kolick for three. Front of the rim, and Hauser has it. A lot of good chances there. Walker in trouble at midcourt. Trapped the pick and roll. Aikens looking for someone. Walker cuts, and his off-balance shot is no good. See, one of the problems that Michigan State's having right now, they don't have a post score to throw the ball to. Sissoko's not that kind of player on offense. Iguodaro gets the roll. I think Tom Mizzle's probably got to go to Malik Hall. 8-0 run to start the second half for Marquette. Hogarth trying to stop the run, he does, and the foul! A.J. coming up big for the Michigan State Spartans. Yeah, Marquette came out very aggressively, but they let Hogarth drive middle, and when you drive middle, there's no help. Everything is strong side, and that's why he was able to get that and just lay it in the basket. Tom Izzo and A.J. Hogarth Hogar don't always see eye to eye, but Izzo loves him. He said he's stubborn, just like me, and he said we're both tough as nails. I don't think anyone's going to question the toughness of Izzo or Hogarth. Kolick for three. Buries it. I mean, three threes, but they, they make nine a game, so it's not like that's, that this is not something they can do. They do do this. Seven threes in the game. Walker trying to answer. Cannot. And the rebound to Kolick. Prosper running the floor up ahead. Mitchell the trailer. And Mitchell pulls it out. Prosper left alone. And Hauser has the rebound. That's his ninth of the game. Yeah, that transition defense was not good by Michigan State. I mean, he was wide open there. Michigan State third best three-point shooting team in the country. Just one for 12 today. Well, you got to give Marquette's defense credit. They've been running them off the line from the beginning of the game. Hogarth spinning off glass. No. Iguodaro is there for the rebound. Up ahead, Prosper. Hauser got a hand on it. Great play by Hauser. Now that was good transition defense. Walker moves in. 
Good defense by Iguodaro. Sissoko has it. There's the foul. And you can just feel the intensity here to begin the second half. Well, you know what else you can feel, Andrew? You can feel the pace of the game much faster, and that helps Marquette. They want to play at a faster pace. The Tom Izzo's team this year, 304 in tempo, according to Ken Palm. They want to play slow and half court. They'll run when they have it. Marquette now has sped up the game a little bit. Best Coke ever? Only one way to find out. Take a taste. That last Marquette foul was on Iguodaro, so he's going back to the bench with three fouls. Yeah, he's probably going to sit for four or five minutes. Hauser has also come out of the game for Michigan State and getting looked at on the bench. Sissoko gets it done at the line, just a 62% free throw shooter. Makes them both, it's a one point game. Yeah, they really need to try to get Marquette to play a little bit more half court. Not that they're not good at it, but they really like the fast pace. They left Prosper again. Doesn't make him pay for it, Hogard the board. Walker is 3 of 10 in this game for 6 points. Hogard doesn't get the roll, and Kolik with the rebound. They're starting to whip the ball around much faster, Marquette, in the half court. And you said it, the pace of this game has really picked up. Fans wanted to travel, eight on the shot clock. Joplin slips to the ground and no call yet if it's a foul or a travel. It's a travel turnover by Marquette. Yeah, no doubt. Great drive there by Gold. The Prosper finishes with a dunk. And then Cam Jones with a nice finish there. This is some thrilling drives. Kolick, drive and dish. Way to sell it, Lap. Thrilling drives presented by <laughs> Nissan. For more on Kolick, we send it over to Jamie. It's been great getting to know the Kolick family. His mom, Lynn, is a wonderful woman to uh, a mother to Tyler and his brother, Brandon. She's also great at protecting the identity of their dad, Kevin. Can't find this man anywhere in the crowd. This is like a Price is Right camera at this point. He refuses to be, doesn't want to be shown on TV. He's nervous watching Tyler. He's also very competitive, guys. When he goes to Milwaukee to see his son at Marquette, he plays pickup basketball at the rec center. They got no, it's Tyler Kolick's dad. He's just that guy that wants to play pickup. He'll play anybody. <laughs> Great player in his day at UMass Dartmouth, the Little East Player of the Year. Now his son, the Big East Player of the Year. And an offensive foul is called on Hogard, and that's his third. Now he's got to be careful. Oh, I don't know about that one. That's... Uh... I know Stevie Mitch is a great defender. I think he was moving and had not established position there. Kolick looked like he dribbled it off his foot. He, he does, a turnover. You know, one of the things we have to keep our eye on, too, is in the first half, Marquette had 30 possessions. They are on pace for a 40-possession half right now. That's not good for Michigan State. They had a nice tempo going in the first half. Can't let this team start going up and down. Hauser comes back in from Michigan State. And here's that press that had a, we had a 10-second violation and almost had a couple more. Carson Cooper on the floor for the Spartans. He played eight minutes in the first half. He averages six minutes per game this year. Sets a high screen for Hogard. Hauser from the free throw line, no. Five straight misses for Michigan State. Jones dribbles into traffic, and his shot was altered there by Cooper. Good job by the freshman. You know, this is a game where I think Tom Mizzo can play small. He can play with Hauser and Malik Hall at the four and five spot, and that might be his best offensive team, because they don't have a guy posting up now as it is. Second Marquette steal. Mitchell for three. Air ball caught by Malik Hall. 
Hall waits for his teammates. Here's Walker. They're trying to get him going. Had a dozen against USC on Friday. Walker just inside the line. That goes in. Michigan State back in front by one. And that's what he goes. That's what he does. He's terrific off the dribble. Iguodaro going to the scorer's table for Shaka Smart with three fouls. Set the check in next whistle. Prosper looking to go baseline and Cooper commits the foul. Tune in to Creator League's 2v2 season featuring viral creators Cash Nasty, Jenna Bandy, Devante Friga, and more. Watch live on the Creator League YouTube channel as they compete for a chance to play in the championship game in Houston on April 2nd. And A.J. Hogarth just went out with the three fouls. Jones and Mitchell getting a breather for Marquette. Seven minutes into the second half. Iguodaro cuts, hands, but can't finish out of bounds to Michigan State. And now they are going to talk about this call. And an overrule, it's Marquette basketball. Oh, yeah. Looked like Hauser touched it last. Marquette has cooled off a little bit. They've missed their last five shots in a row. Good pass. Oh, Ross couldn't handle it, though. Turnover number nine by Marquette. They had five the entire game against Vermont on Friday. Aikens with Igadoro on him. Walker. Quick. Prosper is fouled. Going for the rebound. Sissoko clipped him. Sissoko with his third. Joining Cooper and Hogard, who also have three fouls for Michigan State. Steve, what do you do if you're Michigan State offensively? You've been so reliant on the three this year. It's not falling. They're just one for 12. And as you pointed out in the first half, they don't really have that post presence to throw the ball to. And, and that's why I was thinking maybe the thing to do would be to try and go small and play with Malik Hall and Joey Hauser at the four and five spot. Great pass by Iguodala. And Chaplin hits it. I mean, as we talked about earlier, also Iguodala is one of the best passing big guys in the country if not the best two to one assist to turnover ratio he threw a bullet to the corner that time that ends a five minute scoreless drought for Marquette Walker back out to Malik Hall he bounces one to Hauser hit him right in the chin and Hall takes it right back they need to try and get something easy because the Marquette half-court defense has been so much better than the first half. Out of bounds. And they signal Michigan State ball for when we come back. Both these teams fighting for a spot in the Sweet 16 on CBS. Over to a 14 handicapper, Coach Lapis with his chalk talk. <laughs> well, the first thing that's wrong here is Tyson Walker's got to force Colin away from the pick and roll. Once he comes this way, Carson Cooper is stuck. He's got to help. But once he helps, look what Igadora does. He dives quick. Now Malik Hall comes to help. They hit him in the deep corner there, and Joplin knocks it out. Igadora is a tremendous passer, but he also knows how to move without the ball. Really good there. Marquette doing a much better job on the glass this half. They were out-rebounded by eight in the first half. So far this half, plus four against Michigan State. And a whistle and a foul against the Golden Eagles. That's going to go on the freshman, Chase Ross. By the way, I know we got more important things to talk about. I am not a 14 handicap. Let's just let's get that straight. We got to... Trying to sandbag on national TV. That's what you're doing, aren't you? I don't think they're fooled by you, Yeah. Lat. Hall sends it back up to Hauser. 
Hauser's only attempted one three-pointer today. He missed it. See, Igadoro is just standing in the middle of the lane. Aikens for three, and they still won't fall for Michigan State. And, and you know, Igadoro is just, he's guarding Carson Cooper, and he's just standing in the middle of the lane. And if they're not going to throw it to him, that's what he's going to do the entire game. Out of bounds, and last touch by Marquette. You can watch whip around coverage of all men's games on your computer, phone, tablet, or streaming device with Fast Break. Presented by Nissan, it's in the March Madness Live app. Scan the QR code now to download. Watching Adora on defense, this whole possession standing there in the middle of the floor, number 13. He's like playing policeman in the middle of the lane. Hauser in the paint. He rushed that one and it comes up short. Marquette looking for a good offensive possession. Three turnovers in their last four trips, and now it's four out of five. Two on one the other way. Hogard for two. Tied at 42. Midway through the second half. I tell you, Hogard is tough finisher in transition. Joplin rejected. Cooper got a hand on it. The freshman Carson Cooper continues to deliver big minutes for Tom Izzo. He's got to post up deeper than that. Hauser from the corner. Michigan State is one out of 14 from deep. 39% on the season, number three in the country. But Joplin gives it right back. Marquette very sloppy of late. Four turnovers in their last five trips and now five out of six. K-State awaits the winner. And you know, Michigan State only forces like nine and a half turnovers a game. They're near the bottom of the nation in that regard. Michigan State has only won one game this year when making five or fewer three-pointers. And that one game was Friday. They only made five against USC. Prior to that, they had lost eight games when making five or fewer threes. There you see it. Only one today on 14 attempts. But they are tied with Marquette as we approach nine minutes to play. And it's because of what they've done in the paint. Shot clock inside 10. Walker from the free throw line. It's good. 10 points for Tyson. He comes off that screen so quickly. He's great off the dribble and pulling up. Michigan State fans making some noise here in Columbus. Kolek lost it. Marquette can't hit on the basketball. Aikens for three. Long rebound right out to Hogarth. And then a foul. 15 foul of the half against Marquette. And that's the third on Kolek with 8.20 to go. I mean, what did Tom Izzo tell us? First thing we said, well, what do you, how do you, what do you think of your team? He said, well, we, we shoot it pretty good. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. They've shot it great all year. One for 15 tonight. It's been turnover trouble for Marquette. 14 on the day. So you see the foul trouble for both teams. The Big Ten's a really good league. They haven't shot it good here in, this, in Columbus, let me tell you. Well, we know what happened to Purdue. FDU and set the play after this one against Florida Atlantic. And a lot of contact inside. Hauser to the ground along with Prosper. He's hurt. And both are slow to get up. Hauser appears to be okay, but Prosper is still down. A collision in the paint.
And the officials are going to go to the monitor to take a closer look at this one. We'll step aside as well on CBS. We are back with our game summary. Michigan State led by as many as 13. It's down to two, but Gene Steratore is with us. And Gene, they've just upgraded this to a flagrant one on Prosper. Yeah, and you know, Andrew, I agree with it because when you see uh, Hauser starting to come around that screen, he's really freed up. Prosper's got his arm up there. And then this, not that this is excessive contact with it, but you're dealing with more of an extended hold. So he's got a hook around the upper, upper area, around the neck area. And then that drag down right there, not only is it up there and restricting in an excessive way, it prevents Hauser from getting an easy, easy bucket if he's freed up on a good screen. All right, Gene, thank you very much. Hauser with the free throw. It's good. He's 87% on the season. And he'll have one more with 8.20 to go. Nine points, 10 rebounds for Joey Hauser. And Michigan State increases its lead. It's up to four. Hogard struggling to get it in, locates Walker. I wouldn't be surprised to see Marquette at some point go back to that zone, which was effective the last six minutes of the first half. And a foul is called against Sean Jones. And that's the seventh team foul against Marquette, so a one and one coming for the Spartans. It'll be Tyson Walker at the line. Michigan State's going to be shooting a lot of fouls, and they're a 75% foul shooting team. Already 9 of 11 from the line today. Yesterday, we had a chance to talk with Tom Izzo, and we asked him about how the Michigan State campus is doing after the shooting tragedy back on February 13th. Three people killed, five were injured. Izzo was among those who spoke at a campus vigil. He said the first couple of weeks after, very eerie. He said then spring break came. It started to feel a little bit better after break. And he said, we could never go back to the way it was, but we're trying to help people in the healing process. And if they can smile for a couple hours while we're playing basketball, maybe that helps us heal as a community. We certainly wish those who are injured a speedy recovery. That last Michigan State foul was on Hauser. That's his third. It's an 8-0 run for the Spartans. Marquette, in their last 13 trips, they've turned it over eight times, and they're just one of five. But Jones with a spark. I mean, if he gets any kind of room coming off that screen, you're too late. 11 points for Cam Jones. One possession game, seven and a half to go. Michigan State can't get a good look from three. Four on the shot clock. Sissoko, oh, what a move. Iguodaro, he's been pretty quiet today with the foul trouble. They better get up on that screen quick. And they Bogard did that time. Knocked it out. Hauser's going to get a breather. And Aikens back. Kolick returns for Sean Jones. Kolick only has four points. And this was after a, a quiet game against Vermont when he was three for 11 for eight points. They need the Big East player of the year to get going down the stretch. Mitchell gets it back and sends it out to Jones. That was a good closeout by Aikens. And then a foul committed on the perimeter. That is going to go on Sissoko. Jamie told you earlier that nobody can ever find Kolick's dad, Kevin. We found him. Our great crew here has located Waldo, <laughs> also known as Kevin Kolick. 
Kevin had some of his old college teammates with him this weekend to watch his son play. He did not have a happy-go-lucky look on no, his face no, there. No, there was some pacing going on. The foul on Sissoko was his fourth. So he returns to the bench with eight points. Polick coughs it up. Hogard with numbers. Walker up ahead. Walker's foul. Boy, Tyler Kolick has had some turnovers in this game. And actually, these last two games that are very uncharacteristic. Six turnovers in this game today for Kolick. And Steve, you said it so well early. Michigan State, they look to get down as fast as they can. And if it's not there, then they're going to use the entire shot clock. That time it was there for Walker, and he gets to the free throw line. And that's Tom Izzo. You know, as much as they try to push it across half court, you wouldn't think so, but that's what they do. Saturday, one game with a title up for grabs. It's the NCAA Division II Men's Basketball Championship. Saturday, 3 Eastern here on CBS. Spartans 13 of 15 at the free throw line. And they push the lead to seven. Izzo trying to fire him up to play some defense. And they've been playing good defense in this half. Marquette has only six field goals and ten turnovers. But Iguodaro with a beautiful move. And that's the first time this game he was able to do that, get in the lane like he does back his man down and score. He did it a lot the other day, first time tonight. Six points, seven rebounds, four assists for Oso. Walker. Iguodaro has it over to Prosper. Marquette patiently looking for a good shot. Ten on the shot clock. And Iguodaro throws that one out of bounds. The foul was called first. That's going to go on Carson Cooper. That's his fourth. I mean, yeah, that's a foul there when he had his hands on him. Not so much on the baseline there, but when the when Iguodoro started dribbling, he did have his hands on him. The team that Tom Izzo has in now is a team I've been kind of wanting to see for a while. Let's see what happens when they don't have anybody standing in the lane, what that does to their spacing in the half court on offense. Playing with Malik Hall and Joey Hauser at the four and five spot now. Jamie told us before the game about the relationship between Tom Izzo and Shaka Smart, and I love what Smart had to say about Izzo yesterday. This was a compliment. He said, Izzo lights himself on fire, and he makes sure that fire is so bright that it affects everyone around him. And, and you can feel Izzo's energy, not only in this game, but throughout his career. It's on full display tonight in a three-point game and a spot in the Sweet 16 on the line. Akins in trouble, able to recover and find Walker. An illegal screen set against Malik Hall. This has been a point of FDA yeah, moved his hip in. He, he, you know, you got to stand still and let your guy use the screen. He just leaned that hip that little bit, and that's a foul. Fourth offensive foul of the game against Michigan State. Oh, what a slip. And the finish by Uso, plus one. He's as good a slipper of a pick and roll screen as anybody in the country because he's so quick he's got great feet you're gonna see it here gone he's gone before malik hall could even catch up to him if you come out and try to think about hedging that screen because you want to worry about colic this kid is diving fast but he fails to tie the game misses the free throw michigan state still up by one inside five minutes to go they're very aggressive with this trap now, I'll tell you. And a foul is called against Mitchell as Hogard went to the deck. I mean, this, that's a bad place to stop the bounce, obviously. 
That's a foul. A one and one for A.J. Hogard, who on the season is a 79% uh, free throw shooter, but he missed three free throws in the win over USC on Friday. How about them missing seven in a row in the last two minutes? Sixty percent from the line as a team in the first round win. Hogard makes the front end. And his dad in attendance. Tom Izzo was excited about Hogard coming into the week. He said that after the Big Ten tournament, he loved the prep and practice that Hogard displayed back at Michigan State. But he goes one of two at the line. And, you know, Tom Izzo brought Sissoko back in because Igadoro started to get loose these last few minutes. Sissoko playing with four fouls. Igadaro goes right at him. Over a wild shot, and Sissoko has it. Good job by Sissoko moving his feet and not getting beat, and then just putting his arms straight up. Hogard to Hauser. It's good! Big shot for Joey Hauser. Just the second three of the night for Michigan State. Jones looking to answer. Oh, yeah! Here we go! Aggressive with that hedge. Oh, call it. Great vision to pick off the pass. Running the break. Jones for three. Not this time. Tipped around. Aikens had it. Lost it. Prosper grabs it. Goes up. And he's fouled. Prosper will shoot free throws when we come back. Buckle up in Columbus. Two-point game for a spot in the Sweet 16 on CBS. With Steve Lapis, Jamie Erdahl, our entire crew, I'm Andrew Catalan, and we are set for a good finish here between Michigan State and Marquette. Prosper is at the free throw line after A.J. Hogard just picked up his fourth foul. Steve, how about this? That foul that Prosper just drew, the eighth foul he's drawn today. Yeah, he's been all kinds of active, without a doubt. Let's check in with Jamie. Andrew, it's fascinating to, fascinating to watch coaches handle their business in timeouts in a game like this. Shaka Smart just led his team through a breathing exercise in the first 15 seconds of this huddle. I'm told that the team does it in pregame and practices. They have a mental skills coach. It's a very rare instance, though, that it happens in a game. This wow. is such a well-connected team, and that is taking it to another level. For me, definitely. <laughs> you didn't do breathing <laughs> exercise? I couldn't breathe. <laughs> One point game, 3.20 to go. Hogard with four fouls. Shot clock at five. Walker's got good range. Dribbles in the paint with the left hand. Whoa. Oh, what a finish! Over Igadoro. I'll tell you, this kid off the dribble is terrific. He's got 16 points. Jones for the tie. Not there. Sissoko the rebound. A lot of contact Whoa. behind the play. Sissoko and Mitchell to the ground as Hogarth brings it up. Walker thought about a three. Now they pull it back out. I'll tell you, I was asking for Sissoko to come out and then go small, but he's really done a great job on Igadoro. Really good job. Great move by Tom Izzo with five on the shot clock. Hogard going at Kolek. Hogard wins that battle. I think it'd be a good time for a timeout. Two minutes to go. Kolek and a block. Oh, Shaka Smart thought it was a goaltend. It looked like a clean block to me.
I always believe in the last two minutes, if it's close on a goal 10, they should call it, because then they can go to the monitor. Now they can't go to the monitor because they didn't call anything. Hogar trying to get by Mitchell. Hogar puts it up off glass. No, Malik Hall with a man-sized offensive rebound. And Tom Izzo fired up as he calls timeout. Here's a look at the Axe finest moment. And we go back to the play from a moment ago when a block was called on the court. The Marquette bench wanted goaltending. Gene Steratore, what do you think? Andrew, it does not get closer than this. And in my opinion, I think it happened simultaneous, which would not be goaltending. Clarence Thomas, the official at the bottom of the screen, when we look in the center position, is in great position. And even on top of all that, if they would have called goaltending, because it was at 2.01 when it occurred, it's not reviewable. But I think really looking at this replay, that that contact is simultaneous with touching the glass, which would not be goaltending. But boy, is that close. Yeah, I thought that was a good block. Obviously very close. And I didn't know if it was 159 left <laughs> or one. But my point is, is if I'm a referee and it's close to two minutes, I'm blowing the whistle there so that we can go to the monitor. I think you need to do that every time you have something like that close late. Walker with a big shot. Out of the timeout, Spartans go up by seven. Marquette does have three timeouts remaining. Kolek. Oh. Sissoko got a hand on it. Well, they're going to have to foul. Seven down, 57 seconds, need to foul. 6-0 run by Michigan State, and they're not fouling. They're going to be down seven with 30 There's seconds to go. Well, you said it, and we should say it again. Since Sissoko has come back in the game, what a job he has done, the junior from Mali. Just, he's the one guy they have that can be a rim protector, and he doesn't do much on offense. He makes putbacks and things like that, but he has had an effect on this game because Igadoro normally dominates a game, not just from scoring, but from handling the ball, getting in the lane, and he just has not been able to do that on a consistent basis because of Sissoko. Walker gets it done at the line. Since coming back into the game, Sissoko has four rebounds and two blocks in three and a half minutes. And that doesn't even take into account how he's affected, how Igadoro is playing. Michigan State's only made two threes, but 16 of 19 at the free throw line. And a turnover! Walker comes in! And he scores! Kolick for three. Big shot for Tyler Kolick, and Shaka Smart calls timeout. We are back with a look at our game reset. Each team has two timeouts remaining, both teams in the double bonus. All right, Steve, Marquette, foul and foul quickly, right? Got to foul, set up your pressure. Maybe get one trap in the corner if you can force it in the corner, but you have to foul right away. Eight, with 35 seconds to go. You can't be choosy at this point. You know, a big stat in this game, Andrew. Marquette, eight for 24 from two in the game. Hogard struggling to get it in, and he calls timeout. So Michigan State with one timeout remaining here on CBS. This one heads to Madison Square Garden to take on Kansas State on Thursday. It'll be Tennessee against either FDU or FAU on Thursday as well. That game coming up on True TV, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Hey, what a shot this is. Barry Sanders in the hat. His son Nick is on the team. You got Mark D'Antonio, the former Michigan State football coach, and Kirk Gibson, excellent Michigan State football and baseball player. Good job stepping the guy out of bounds. That was really well done by Tom Izzo. Break the press. Out. They got a foul. They don't want to foul oh. Hauser, though. 87% at the line. And you don't see people do what Tom Uzo just did. Roly Massimino used to do it all the time when I was an assistant. Step that guy out of bounds. You can do it, 
after a made basket. Can't do it on a dead ball. But one thing we have to say, Tom Izzo is 23 and seven when he's got a one day prep in the NCAA tournament. So in the second round and in the Elite Eight, he is 23 and seven. We only has one day to prepare. Hauser against his former team has a double-double with 13 points and 10 rebounds. And he's money at the line. Seven out of seven today. It's a 10-point game. 28 seconds left. Jones for three. Long rebound to Walker. And there's the foul. And the Michigan State fans and their bench can taste it here in Columbus. The physicality of the Michigan State defense to me was the difference in this game. I mean, they made, Marquette made all kinds of threes, but shot 33% from two. If I told you before the game that Michigan State would win but go 2 of 16 from 3, you would have told me what? I would have said no way, but I will tell you this. They're not a team, even though they shoot 39% from the three-point line, they don't shoot a ton of them, so they do do other things, and they did today. Bullets 3 not there, tipped around. Mitchell cleans it up and lays it in with 10.8 on the clock. And an official's timeout as Hauser lost his shoe. A Michigan State team that lost five of eight in late January. And they welcomed Maryland to East Lansing. They beat Maryland, Tom Izzo called that a turning point for the team. Some bumps along the way, highlighted by the 11 point lead they had with one minute to go in Iowa, they lost the game. But here they are, Michigan State on the verge of returning to the Sweet 16. Have not been there since 2019 when they went to the Final Four. Walker to Hall. And he'll pull it out. Mr. March, Tom Izzo, takes Michigan State back to the Sweet 16. The Spartans closed the game on a 13 to 5 run in the last three and a half minutes. I mean, they took a team that scores 80 a game and they got 60. That's it. Pretty simple story. Tom Izzo said all week, you don't win in March without defense. He's been on his team so much about playing better defense. He was pleased with their effort against USC, and I'm sure he's real happy after this effort tonight as we advance Michigan State to the Sweet 16 Thursday at the Garden against Kansas State. Well, what was the other thing he said you had to have in March? No guards. Guards, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Tyson Walker was tremendous in this game, 23 points. And Jamie is with Coach Izzo. Coach, what's bringing you to tears right now? Yeah, it's been a long year, but really proud of those guys. They hung in there. Shaka's got a hell of a team. He does a hell of a job. We just finally made some plays. You know, our defense got a little better again. We made some plays. I'm just happy for our guys. You, I know you want to watch him celebrate, but I have to ask about Tyson Walker. You go into the transfer portal and get a kid from New York City. How tough was he tonight? Well, we're going home. And the first, I told him two things. You get me there, I want a cab ride and one of them big slices of pizza. So that's what Tyson owes me. He can pay for it with his NIL money. You had one day to prepare for the best team in the Big East. What did you know about your group that knew you could get to the Sweet 16? My assistants did a hell of a job, you know. I think that's what happens, you know. Kids were focused, did a hell of a job. Everybody had some fun doing it. I just can't tell you how excited I am for them. Thanks, Jimmy. 